Physics is me, you, and us. Why do we study it? How can we understand quantum mechanics, relativity, the Big Bang Theory, and our universe? All of this and more are discussed by Dr. Nassim Magdi at the YouTube channel Nessentron. Um, so you, you guys, um, I think, uh, big the idea, you evolve it, and I think originally, according to my reading, the first um, trial or the first string theory uh, was in uh, 26 uh, dimension, originally. Well, the first one, <laughs> uh, it was realized only a little bit later that it only made precise mathematical sense as a pure mathematical structure in 26 dimensions. That was, well, I don't know, a year or two after the original proposal of string theory. That was not by me, that was by somebody else. But usually that's a requirement for the theory to be stable, meaning no violations. Yep. Um, yeah. it, it, it works in, in the way we expect it to work. It's required for it to be stable. It's required for it to be unitary. It's required for it to be relativistically invariant. It just has to be, uh, right. Yeah, and, and then I think- which, which is of course, was a terrible thing. <laughs> Nobody wanted to be thinking about yeah. 26 dimensions. Yeah, when we start, you know, we speak, okay, we can have three and the time. That's what yeah. we can understand. Then we're speaking about like 26. And then I think after realizing or mo making some modification in the theory, we went down to now the M theory about, uh, we're speaking about 11. Uh, I mentioned the M theory, which actually I had a question for you that seemed like no one knows what it is. Uh, what's M stand for? I think. <laughs> well, I don't know what Witten um, meant when he put an M, and I've asked him, many people have asked him, and he says he didn't mean anything. He just called it M theory. Uh, later on, one version of it or one interpretation of it was in terms of matrix quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. and so it started to be called M for matrix. Ah, okay. So they tried to make sense of it after it had been yeah, there, was a, there already. There was a string theory kind of version of it, which was based on the quantum mechanics of matrix degrees of freedom. That was, um, it's called BFSS matrix theory. Oh. And uh, that, that could be an interpretation. Other people said, said it meant mother theory, meaning the, the mother of all mother theories. Of all theories yeah. um, I remember there were other words that people speculated that Witten might have meant. And when he was asked, he said, I didn't mean anything. Yeah, it's like he wrote it and then everybody had to make sense why M right. failed. Like, yeah. but it's, it's a little funny because I was looking online and it seemed like everybody has um, his own interpretation why it's an yeah. M theory. Obviously, and, obviously it's not. And, and I couldn't find his yeah. word outside. It's like... Um, yeah. Okay, so I thought either he just decided it's an M theory, and then everybody after that come up with uh, some interpretation. He pr he probably meant something, but he's not telling. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So uh, one one thing here. So um, what is the main things that the string theory solve for general relativity? Like, um, so we don't have singularities anymore in the theory. Well, say it again. Like the, 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 the so now string theory doesn't have any singularities anymore. It get rid of that. Well, no, I don't. Well, I'm not sure that's correct. Um, it depends on the kind of singularities you're talking about. It is true that the Feynman diagrams of the string theory don't have infinities. Okay. That if you think of string theory as a theory of a kind of generalized kind of system of Feynman diagrams, where the Feynman diagrams of gravity are infinite. They have infinities all over the place. They're oh. not renormalizable. The theory just doesn't seem to want to, um, to make good mathematical sense. The corresponding things in string theory seem to be finite and they seem to be well defined they seem to have good mathematical properties so um so how maybe a question out of the um out of the topic is bit. so how the how the how can one imagine the um let's call it the early universe in the string theory or it does not answer that questions the early universe 
Well, what I tried to tell you is before is that there really is no proper either string theoretic or quantum gravity understanding of the of the Big Bang. I think I think there was I think that has yet to be uh, answered. I could try to make up stuff, but I wouldn't be I would be fooling myself. The, and I would be fooling you if I tried to make up some grand scenario to tell you how string theory was describing the early universe. I, I know you're not that person, so that's why I asked. No, I'm not that person. Yeah. And um, uh, as I said, the things that string theory have done and have accomplished are a kind of mathematical consistency of gravity and quantum mechanics. They fit together nicely, but in a situation which is just not the kind of universe we live in. And in particular, it doesn't have a big bang. Yep. So well, there we are. We've exactly. spent a lot of time <laughs> in the wrong world, but everybody knew that. The, um, the idea, and I think it's still a correct idea, is to unravel and completely understand that model world which is not our world, learn all the lessons that we can from it, and then try to put them together and see what they imply for something more like the real world. And that's only beginning now. That's very much in its infancy. Okay. There are so, some thoughts about how inflation works in string theory, but for every thought uh, about how inflation works in string theory, there is some other thought that inflation will not fit together with string theory. So it, it's not clear. Okay, so we can say that we have the first framework that could hopefully drive us in future to have more understanding of our universe as it is right now. So yeah, that, that that's really great. So even with, with that current universe of string theory, um, I have maybe two questions remain. One of them related to the um, what we call brains. It's like brain is um, is like I would say when we take the brain on one dimension, it is a string. But yes. I don't understand much about that. So if you want to elaborate, well, that's right. Know. I mean, the brain in one dimension, one dimensional brain. Incidentally, it's not B R A I N, not like this kind of brain. Yeah. <laughs> B R A N E, like a membrane. Yeah, membrane. Yeah. Right. A membrane is a two dimensional brain. Mm -hmm. Uh, a one brain, a, a membrane is a two brain that has two dimensions. A, mem a one brain, that's a one dimensional thing, that's a string. Mm -hmm. A three dimensional brain, a three brain is a solid chunk of material in three dimensional space and so forth. Um, straight, one of the discoveries in the context of this not quite real world kind of string theory was that string theories always have membranes as excitations. They always contain mathematically and in principle things that could be produced, for example, in very high energy collisions, mm -hmm. they could be produced, really produced, membranes, like a balloon. A balloon would be a, um, a, a membrane. Uh, they always have strings. So, uh, that was one of the lessons, and I think most of us expect that although we're going to be going to a different kind of world when we study the real world, the lessons of string theory will inform us that very likely there will exist in that world brains, mm -hmm. higher dimensional brains. What do we do with them? Well, one interesting theory is that the universe is filled with what are called cosmic brains, cosmic uh, cosmic strings, they're usually called, but they are brains. And um, that at one time it was even thought that they might replace dark energy. That did not turn out to be the case. Mm -hmm. But it is still very possible that the, uh, that the universe is filled with a network of cosmic brains. And that would be, that would be, um, detectable in astronomical studies. So the lessons that we learned from string theory, hopefully will translate into real world physics, but that's a way down the line. It's not happened yet.
that's great. I think we're, we're our technology is getting better. We're having getting better in technology, building machines. Um, Much better. So who knows? Maybe in in future we'll have better handling on that.